was fortunate for Aspen that the 10 different target markets that we were to sell serialized products into adopted a standardized method for encoding the unique serial number and other critical information onto their packaging. And that method was the GS1 data matrix. The means of sharing serialization event data between us and all of our customers is via what's called an electronic product code information services file, which is also a global GS1 standard. What made this complex project more manageable and allowed for us to implement a single catch-all solution was the widespread adoption of GS1 standards. I found out about GS1 standards in the earlier stages of the serialization project where we were doing fact finding and data gathering. So really the first step was to have a look at all the in-market regulations in the serialized markets that we were going to have to sell products into, as well as uh, all the regulations that market authorization holders or the, the contract companies that we were going to be producing product for had developed for serialization. In all cases, the requirement was for a GS1 data matrix to be utilized. It's allowed us to just implement one solution and not have market specific or customer specific solutions with the way that we generate that serialization data, encode it onto packs and then transfer the data to our partners. From implementation, it would have been more costly, it would have had to generate customized workflows for those markets. It was greatly simplified by the fact that the workflow that we ended up with suited all markets. Having a standardized approach makes sense, not just for the manufacturer, but also for the retail end of things as well. So it makes everyone's lives easier. They will run the line, it'll produce serialized packs. It will print the data matrix with the serial number, the lot number, the GTIN, and the expiry date encoded into that data matrix, as well as the human readable text. And it will immediately verify that data. It will read the data matrix. It will read all the human readable text. If there was any problem with that pack, for example, if it didn't print correctly, if it didn't apply the tamper event labels correctly or any other sort of issue, it will reject that pack and it'll also deactivate the corresponding serial number of that pack. We perform quality release at the site. The final disposition of all those serial numbers that were sitting at a site level get updated. The data sits in our cloud-based repository up until the point then we physically export the stock to our contract customers and the final stage in our serialization lifecycle where we send the stock digitally from here to our contract customer. We send that data in what's called an, an EPSIS file. What's included in that file is not just what's encoded in the pack. It'll include things like the time and date that unique pack was serialized in our factory, information on the global location where that pack was serialized. You can start to build up quite a powerful set of data and the sky's the limit depending on what machines that you implement to link certain bits of data with that physical entity which is described by that unique serial number of that pack. If there was a customer complaint in the future for that pack, it was described as potentially being underweight or having no blister strips inside of a blister pack, we could actually look at that serial number and verify that pack rolled out of our machine at a certain weight so we could validate whether or not that customer complaint is actually valid. So a lot of potential in the future to build in a lot of additional benefits on top of what is just required at a regulatory level. In essence, it's an anti-counterfeiting system. A lot of that is due to the fact that we have adopted a global GS1 standard. 